Hello, and welcome to the Music Teacher Copy Talk Podcast. I'm Tanya. And I'm Carrie. We are both elementary music teachers who love to talk shop, preferably over a steaming cup of coffee. This is episode number 162. Today we are taking a peek at our week and looking at our first grade lesson plans. We'll also talk about our highs and lows from the teaching week, discuss some ideas in our Know Better, Do Better segment, share a Work Smarter, Not Harder teacher tip, and in our CODA section, we'll give some specific recommendations of our favorite, favorite things we are enjoying in or out of the music room. So grab your beverage of choice and let's get started. Well, we're really into the teaching year and we've got <laughs> highs and we've got lows and um, share something with us, Carrie, a high okay. or a low. Okay. I mean, always both, but um, I have a low. I mean, it's just kind of like a, you know, serendipitous, everything could go wrong kind of a low. Um, so I have that class and we've done a whole podcast episode about what to Already? do Already that class. Oh, and we knew even going, let's just talk about third grade. Okay. So third grade, the most impacted group, I think from COVID and just, we have Same a lot piece. of yeah yeah and i feel like a lot of people have been dealing with this with this group of kids seems like nationwide so I've, i'm pretty confident in that statement and then on top of it we just have some kiddos who just have some extra needs um <laughs> a variety of extra needs and we have four classes per grade level um and we create our own specials groups um because we mix them up um so when we mix them up and we did this last spring to get ready for this year um, there was like this whole, like, we don't have enough places. We need seven sections because we have so many lovely students who just need a lot of extra stuff. Um, so you can only separate them so far, right? So we have one group and this ended up getting um, a little bit of extra uh, needs as the best way to put it and we don't really know what to do about it but it is what it is we might scoot one kid i don't know you know sometimes you just don't know what the combinations of kids are going to be like till they're in the room all that to say we've all now art music pe and library our fourth special have experienced this group and we're all like oh my gosh and then we had a sub this last week in the library and she had that group and she checked in with us after went and went oh my gosh so it's it's like everybody right and we're all struggling at least she stuck around Oh, she did. She stayed for the rest of the day. We assured her that the rest of the day was going to be lovely. Um, so here's what happened. Uh, I had that group bring their Chromebooks for the first time because I really want to make sure our students get in their Google Classroom. They know how to find it because that inevitably becomes like my emergency sub plans is kids bringing Chromebooks to music and me posting something there for them to do. Um, so I'm like, that's always a thing. Make sure they're in there. Google Classroom early in the year. So here they come, bringing in their Chromebooks. And this is my second third grade class to bring their Chromebooks. So I did the exact same thing with class number one. Now it's class number two. And what happens? Google Classroom like goes down. Like there was like an of hour. <laughs> It was a couple of, there was an hour where like nationwide Google Classroom. I saw down. that email, I think. Yeah, so that was me with my hardest class the first time with Chromebooks. So, of course, inevitably, like, it happens during class, and it must have happened right when we were logging in because, like, half of them got in, and half of them just got the spinning wheel of death, you know, just the wait, wait, wait. And, of course, my kiddos who have some issues with waiting were the ones who were forced to wait and one just starts screaming what's happening and then he sees somebody else who's in the classroom and he's like how do they do that they're hacking into the system and then he just proceeds to scream for the entire class period hackers they're all hackers and i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> so you know at that point we basically like shut it down and then of course on top of it because this group has lunch and recess right after music we can't just take our chromebooks out with us when we leave we have to walk back to the classroom drop off our chromebooks then come back and get ready for lunch and recess well because i had shut it down early we had like five minutes left and i was like great we're gonna dance because the day before i had taught them the heel toe polka and we did it with the traditional heel toe polka and i was like cool so then today we did heel toe polka with little boo thing 
that fun little song um, works really well with Heel Toe Polka, by the way. Um, anywho, so we did that. So everybody was happy when we left the music room. But when we came back after putting our Chromebooks away, um, I literally stood there and I did the take five breathing technique. I stood in front of the class and I just modeled breathing in and out as I traced my fingers. And I said, I need to take five. And it got real quiet because they were all looking at me like she's nuts and she's going to lose it. Um, so all in all, I guess it turned into a positive because we got to dance and I got to model a breathing technique, but it wasn't what I had planned. So there you go. That's my low. <laughs> okay. Well, this is really funny because you stole mine. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. What I mean is the same thing, not exactly, but similar thing happened to me and it was with third grade. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It was like two days ago. <laughs> And it was just in the moment and I, I was looking back and I was like, was that a good thing or a bad? I don't know if this is a high or a low. Let's call it a low that could maybe be a high. I was giving directions in third grade and they're chatting, chatting, chatting. And I'm doing, you know, those, those things that we do. I'm waiting. They get quiet and then I start talking and then they start chatting again. And I'm like, this is not, I no. It's the beginning of the year. I'm not, we're not making this the norm. Um, I was getting frustrated and, um, uh, the day before the lesson before I modeled the calming corner, right? Uh, one of the things I put in the calming corner and you probably saw I've been holding on to this cause it, it really sparked my, um, uh, memory of this that just happened a couple of days ago. Um, I have some glitter mindful bottles. This one is actually glass. I don't do that in school, no glass in school, but, um, I have one of these in my mindful corner and I, I, demonstrate going to the mindful corner. When we talk about where it is, the calming corners, I've got a think cloud that my husband made me that is on the wall. So when the kid's sitting at the desk, there's like a think cloud above them, literally. And it's just like <laughs> the little cue of like, this is where you let your think bubble go, you know, calm. Um, and I talk about, I like to use the mindful bottle and watch all the glitter fall down because it reminds me of my, my jumbled thoughts and how, you know, there, there's so much going on in my head that I can't focus on the present moment. But when I let all the glitter fall down, it gives me some space in my head so that I can focus on what's happening right now. And, you know, talk about different things you can do in the calming corner. And we actually have a checklist because our SEL person is wonderful. And she gave us like a little checklist to keep at the corner so when the kid goes there they're like how am i feeling use a tool how am i feeling oh set a timer there we have a little you know sand timer anyway so in the midst of this next lesson after we talked about the calming corner which they're already familiar with um they're not stopping they're talking i'm trying to give directions i'm, I'm doing all the things and then i stopped <laughs> um and I just walked, made a beeline back to the calming corner and I sat down <laughs> and I booked up the checklist and I went, oh, how am I feeling? Hmm, I'm really frustrated. I said this out loud. Of course. And then I, you know, and I go, It would oh. be creepier if you didn't say it out loud though. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyway, <laughs> you're right. It would have been maybe next time. And then I, I used the timer. And then I picked up my mindful bottle and I, you know, shook it. And they were all like silent by this time. Yeah. <laughs> Probably looking at me like she's lost it. It's yeah. Over. Yeah. But here's the thing. I didn't get angry. You yeah. know, I, I was not bellowing. I was not stern. I was not threatening. I was just like, I'm feeling like I need this. And I just did that. And then, you know, I used my mindful bottle for this was always uh, also let me just give a little brief it was very small a short time period it was not like this went on and on um <laughs> maybe two minutes this all yeah. happened and then and then i go okay use the mindful but how am i feeling now oh i'm feeling calmer oh wait the students oh i guess it's time to get back to work like it says here and then i went back in front of the class picked up and i was like <laughs> I, I didn't plan this. It just happened in the moment because I'm, I'm, I'm working on not being frustrated 
visually in front of students. I'm working on that because in my school and probably many schools, it just doesn't go anywhere. You know, for mm -hmm. some students, they're like, yay, we won the game. And for, I think, you know, maybe even subconsciously for other students, they just get annoyed at being at, at adult uh, looking angry with them. Or it's and, triggering you know, for some. Yeah, days. it could yeah. be triggering for sure. So I just did it in the moment and I came back. Was everything perfect for the rest of the week with these kids? Of no. course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And that was the magic. We're yeah. done. Everybody yeah. get yourself a calming corner and do the thing. Um, no, anyway, but it just it, later on, I was laughing to myself, especially with just now when you were recounting your story, because I'm like, here I am modeling things just like you did mm -hmm. in the moment. I am legit mm -hmm. need to call, focus and calm down and uh, look up and go, oh, no, kids, this is this not for you. This is for me. Yeah. And um, so I think that's okay to do. You turned a low into yeah. a high. Oh, sure. We could we could call it that. <laughs> or maybe the kids are like, wow, that Miss Lejeune, she she talks to herself she's <laughs> a little out there whatever anyway but i thought it was amusing that yours was the same thing yeah maybe it's that time of year <laughs>
I know there's other versions of it, but that's the one that I do. So the imagery that I give the students, both orally and visually, is we talk about a big heavy train going up the mountain and it's going very slowly. And then we talk about when the train goes down on the other side and it starts to move really fast. So I do that in the prepare stage. And then once we've presented, we talk about the words fast and slow. Not that they didn't know those words before, but you know, there's kind of that moment in Kodai inspired world where we present, do a lot of things with sand blocks because that's just a really great train sound playing both fast and slow. And then another favorite activity for practicing fast and slow is the tortoise and the hare. So obviously pick a version that you love. I love the picture book and I'm going to link to it in our show notes by Jerry Pink. Pinkney, Pinkney, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, really beautifully illustrated. And so I go through the story and I show them the picture book and I tell them the story of the tortoise and the hare. Um, and then back in the olden days of the old Share the Music series, they had these little songs that I've used. I think I've modified them slightly, but the hare song is, I'm the fastest bunny rabbit. I'm the fastest bunny rabbit. I'm the fastest bunny rabbit. Catch me if you can. I normally sing it much faster than that. And then the tortoise's song is slow and steady, always ready. I can get where I must go. And I sing it way slower than that for the kids. So to really drive home the point. And then we do a movement activity. We basically act it out kind of Delcrozian inspired where I'm playing the little ditties on the piano, sometimes singing, and then I take away the singing. So they're only responding to me playing it on the piano. And we act out the story where they're all tortoises or they're all hares. So they're responding to what they're hearing. And then once I feel like they're showing me and I'm getting that formative data, it's time to do more of an official summative assessment, if you will. So I have these little cards, and if you're watching right now on YouTube, you can see them. They're super basic. So on one side, they say slow, and there's a picture of a train going up a mountain and a snail, because I also use, there's a couple of chants that I learned from the old music garden curriculum. Um, the fast one is quickly, 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 go sell little mouse quickly 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 all around the house and then the other one is slowly slowly cross the garden snail slowly slowly along the wooden rail so these cards kind of go along with that too so on one side i have the slow train and the snail and on the other side i have the train going down the mountain and the mouse so every student has one of these they're laminated in my classroom and they put them on the floor because if they're holding them up they get confused which side is supposed to be facing out versus facing them that's really hard for first graders so I tell them to put them on the floor so we can only see one side it's either fast or slow and I start with the quickly and slowly chants I just did and then I do engine engine number nine at different temp temp B so we're going from like super obvious I'm talking about a mouse so yes it's the mouse side to it's the same words but I'm just doing it at a different tempo so now you have to show me is the train going up or down the mountain and then the final is I play something either on a drum or on the piano or whatever with no text and then they have to show me which one it is is it possible that they're looking at their neighbor's cards yeah sure it's possible but I consider that to be a good formative assessment and then summative assessment just to make sure like okay they've got it which for fast and slow it typically happens so as silly and basic as these cards are I'll put a link to them in the show notes <laughs> so if you want to make your own little class set there you go that's that's my fast hey and can slow. I uh, throw something out please do if, if they're because it's great to have one on each side but if they were really messing that up, you could make two separate cards, even maybe two separate colors so that they could hold up one or the other. But that's double the work, double the materials and all that. But like exactly for anybody out there, if you're like, oh, my my students, they would not they'd be thrown by it being a double sided. You could definitely do two separate things. 100 percent. Yep. Yep. I did it this way just for the reason you mentioned. I can copy them double sided and then it's I there's two on a eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So I laminate the whole thing, cut it down the middle, and then it's ready to go. Um but yes, you could totally split it up and have two separate cards, totally. 
Um, okay, so then we're moving out of practicing fast and slow into preparing and then very quickly presenting loud and soft or loud and quiet, whatever you want to call it in your classroom. Um, I do use engine engine number nine again, but this time we talk about if you are standing right next to the train, how would it sound? And we use loud voices, not screaming voices, not yelling voices, but loud voices. If the train was super far away, how would it sound to you? And then we do that. I think it, it can be confusing, but yet it's also beneficial for students to use the same song material for both fast, slow, and loud and soft because I think a lot of times our students and we as an adults, we model soft as slow and loud as fast, right? So then we can start doing some really cool combinations where the train is going up the mountain, but it's very far away. So what is that going to sound like? And first graders are definitely ready for that. I don't do that in kinder, but I do that in first when we're kind of coming back at the comparatives. Um, another big favorite for loud and soft is Grizzly Bear, which I think you mentioned that in our kindergarten podcast. Um, oh, yeah, so we're gonna, Grizzly Bearing it up. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it again, but I'll put it in the show notes because we'll have the notation for it ready to go. Um, I play a silly little game with Grizzly Bear where one student is in the middle, and while we're singing the song, I silently choose a student to go tap the student on the shoulder that's in the middle. And then at the end, when the bear wakes up and we all roar loudly, uh, then the bear has to guess they have three chances to guess who tapped him and then if they haven't got 